Section 12.5, Triple Integrals, Video 9. Earlier I mentioned that if you're integrating over a box, a rectangular prism, then you could just rearrange the order in which you integrate without problems because the front, the back, the top, the bottom, the left and the right were all defined by constants. So they didn't change if you change your orientation. However, that's usually not the case, especially if your limits of integration contain variables. For example, we're going to rewrite this triple integral so that we integrate it in the order dz, d, I'm sorry, dx, dz, dy. Wait, my differentials are missing. Actually, they're missing on purpose. I had originally written them, but as I was writing them, I was thinking there's only one order they could possibly be in. How do I know what order they could be in? Well, the first one either has to be dx or dy, or dz. It can't be dx because I have a limit of integration prior to this containing an x, and it can't be dy because I have a limit of integration prior to integrating the first one that contains a y. So it can't be dx, can't be dy, it has to be dz. Now, let's pretend this first integral happened, and now we're on the second one. The remaining differentials are dx and dy. I can't do the second integral dx because it contains x in the limits of integration. So it must be dy. And then the last one has to be dx. So how do we take a triple integral that's already set up with its limits of integrations and a specific order of integration and rewrite it so that we can integrate it in a different order? Uh, just to let you know, this is not just an academic exercise. There are certain problems that are impossible to integrate in one particular order, but by rearranging it correctly become possible and sometimes easy. So how do we do this? Well, the whole setup on a triple integral is based on what the solid looks like and then deciding, do I want to integrate it, think of it as bounded on top and bottom of surfaces, left to right from surfaces, or front and back of surfaces. So let's reverse engineer this. The last two integrals were a double integral that was integrated over a certain region. So the first question I wanted, would want to ask myself is what region D sets up integral 0 to 1, integral 0 to x squared, some function, we'll just leave it blank, dy dx. And we can sketch this region. Because here's what we know. We know that the inner integral was integrated with respect to y which means these limits of integration are y equals 0 and y equals x squared. So let's go find those on an xy plane. Well, y equals 0 is just the x-axis. y equals x squared is this parabola. So I know that the parabola will be the top of the region, and the x-axis will be the bottom of the region. But where? These both go on forever in both directions. Enter the dx. We know the x was integrated from 0 to 1. So I just have to go from 0 to 1. That defines the left and right bounds of the region. The top and bottom bounds are defined by the parabola and the x-axis. Not drawn to scale. But the equation y equals x squared being the top of this surface and the bottom being y equals 0 from x equals 0 to x equals 1 define this region. All right, <coughs> so now we know what the region in the xy plane would look like. So let's take that over to 3 space, x, y, z. And let's import this picture onto the xy plane. Be very careful because the positive x-axis is here. So it's almost as if we have to take this shape Okay. Take this shape off of the xy plane, flatten it out and rotate it so that it is sitting on the xy axis, excuse me, on the xy plane, and it looks something like this. And so I'll see what I did there. Took this region, pulled it off, rotated it so that the positive x axis, axis lined up with the positive x axis, and the negative y axis lined up with the uh, positive y axis lined up with the positive y axis. All right, make that a little bit more parallel. That's bothering me. 
All right, so this is y equals x squared, and this is y equals 0 from 0 to 1. Now let's go back to the inner integral. The inner integral is a function of z, which means the limits of integration represent values of z. z equals 0 and z equals y. z equals 0 is the xy plane. So the bottom is z equals 0, it's the xy plane. And the top, well, I take that back. This, well, I was going to say this may be the top, but it can't be because it's the lower limit of integration. Well, it shouldn't be because it's the lower limit of integration. The upper limit of integration is z equals y. So what does that look like? Well, forget the x-axis for a moment and just look in the yz plane. The line y equals z is this diagonal line. Because the equation is independent of the x, I can move out and it would be the same diagonal line. So if I were to draw the same diagonal line and then connect them, that would give me that plane. Not the best plane I've ever drawn, but it'll have to do. So our solid is defined on the top by z equals y. So this solid will look something like, well, I'll tell you what. Let's take the projection and push it back up. Now, what do I mean by push it back up? Well, whatever this solid was got projected down to the xy plane, so let's lift it back up. But when we lift it back up, it's got to intersect the, the uh, plane z equals y. So let's take the points of significance on here. Let's go back over here. This point, of course, is the origin. This corner is 0, comma, excuse me, 1, comma, 0. And then the point up here is 1, comma, 1, because 1 squared is equal to 1. So let's take those points on the xy plane, uh, 1, comma, 1, and let's see what they would look like up here at z equals y. Well, if I move this up, I know that z equals y. Hold up, folks. In three dimensions, these all have a z coordinate of 0. Shame on me. Now notice that on these two corners, z is equal to y, which means this line segment is part of that plane. The plane contains the x-axis. Because on the x-axis, z and y are both 0, so they're equal. Now at this point, if it got projected down, it had to be up here and satisfy the condition z is equal to y. So if I move it up, i got to move it up to the point where the z is equal to y. So I would move it up 1, and it would be at 1, comma, 1, comma, 1. That would be directly above it, and it would satisfy the equation of the plane. As far as this line, well, what do we know about the points on this line? Oh, wait a second. This point and this point have the same x value which means they are in the same plane parallel to the x-y axis. So if I just connect them, then their y's would be equal to z's. Now, as far as this curvy part, it would kind of come up like that. So it's kind of like a pyramid that makes a sharp point. Uh, a little tricky to draw, but we'll, we'll go with that. Okay. So the top of this is defined by the plane z equals y. The bottom is defined by the plane z equals 0. The left in the region is defined by y equals x squared. The right is defined by y equals 0. Excuse me. The right is defined by y equals x squared. The left is defined by y equals 0. And of course, in the x direction, it's just integrated from 0 to 1. All right. So let's see if we can rearrange the order of integration now. Excuse me. All right, so now that we've got that region sort of set up, let's rearrange it in the order that we're being asked to rearrange it, which was dx, dz, dy. Just got erased there, but I just saw it. dx, dz, dy. Let's make sure that was the correct order we wanted to do. Yes, dx, dz, dy. I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but this is example four on page 725. All right, if we're going to set this up as a triple integral of some function over that solid uh, dx, dz, dy, 
Because the innermost integral is with respect to x, we have to think about these surfaces being the x direction. So the x direction is like this. Okay, so front to back. What is the front of this surface? Well, this, the front of this surface is this triangle sitting on the front. So can we figure out the equation of that triangle as a function of, uh, excuse me, in, the term, in terms of x equals to something? Well, yeah, this triangle is just sitting on a plane that's moved out. How far out is it? One. So the front of this, the front of this is the plane x equals one. Come out one and then your y is equal wherever you want. Now where's the back of it? Well the back of it is, let's see, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a curved part of this sitting back here. It kind of, you see how this curved part goes back down to the origin? There's a wall below it. And maybe I can sketch the piece of it. It's just getting messy. But there's a curvy wall. Let me fold this. There's a curvy wall on the back of it. On the front is the, is the plane. But on the back, the curvy wall is curvy and diminishes down to the origin because of this parabola down there. Um, okay, so we need to know the back of this as x equals something. So what do we know about the back of that? Well, let's see. We know that the bottom of it is the equation y equals x squared. And that's the equation of it. Well, almost. If we were to take that parabola, y equals x squared, well, just the half parabola, and shoot it straight up, we would get a parabolic cylinder is what it would be called, that goes straight up. Uh, the value of the z is uh, something that we'll work out in a moment, but I think the back of this is just the equation that's the projection in the xy plane shot straight up and down. The z is irrelevant, so there's no z in the equation. So we just have to take the equation y equals x squared and solve it for x, and we get x equals the square root of y. So that should be our limits of integration for the x from x equals the square root of y because it's the back to x equals 1 because it's the front. Okay? So from x equals the back, which is the square root of y, to the front, which is x equals 1. All right? Now for the dz and the dy, we need to think about the projection of this solid onto the zy plane. So what would this look like if I flattened it to the zy plane? Well, it looks like the largest cross section is the front here. So if I push this all the way down to the zy plane, I would just have to keep track of this diagonal line that goes from the origin to one comma one. So the projection back on the zy plane Zy, if I push it back, it's going to look like that. Everything is zeros and ones, so zero, zero, one, zero, and one, one. And so now I have to decide is this going to be, are we going to look at this as equations on the bottom of the top or equations on the left and the right? And the answer lies in the fact that we want to do dz next. So we need to think about this as being bounded as equations above and below. So from below, this equation is e equal 0. And from above, this equation is e equals y. How do I know it's e equals y? Well, do slope-intercept form. The slope of this line is 1. Now be careful. I know slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. But in this orientation, it would be z equals mx plus y. The slope is 1, the z-intercept is 0, so it would be z equals y. So in terms of dz, the, the graph on the top versus the bottom, if you will, above or below, top or bottom, the same thing. 
On the top, z is equal to y. And on the bottom, z is equal to 0. And then, with respect to y, those are just constants. The y's are being integrated from 0 to 1. It's not an easy task because it's really hard to visualize the solid sometimes. Um, if there were a graphing utility that would not only allow you to graph this in three dimensions but rotate it so that you could get a better look at it, that would be awesome. I'm sure such a utility exists. Don't know one off the top of my head. So let's take a look and see what happened. What happened was exactly what I have. As well as it should be because it was right. This is actually the last video for section 12.5 triple integrals, which is good because normally when I film videos like this, I try to keep them between three and 10 minutes each. We've already had a few that have gone way beyond 10 minutes. I think 16 or 17 was the longest one. If you have any questions, please contact Mr. Walker. Um, and if you can ask him to do, uh, if you need help with a particular problem, have him send that to me and I'll be happy to make a video for it. Actually, if you just want to send it to me directly, my name is Chris Chapa. I'm the chair of the math department. And you can email me at cCHA at tjc.edu if you have a specific problem you would like to see a video for. But I encourage you, in fact, I, I strongly recommend that you contact your professor first. I'm doing this as a favor for Mr. Walker um, because I do have my own classes to take care of as well. But feel free to email me, uh, but be sure to ask Mr. Walker questions also. All right, thank you for your time.